We should build a border wall like the one we see in Israel. We also should adopt a new law that make it illegal to grant benefits to illegal aliens. Most illegal aliens will leave if they cannot survive economically. The U.S. Congress, therefore, can reassess the situation after three years. For those of you who care for foreign poor, I have no problem. Send your dollars abroad, which is much more cost effective. By promoting amnesty and mass immigration, you are helping corporate America exploit our own poor, exploit American workers. You should heed Cesar Chavez, whose intention was to protect American workers, and he knew the law of supply and demand. Now, let's remember, we are now the greatest debtor nation on earth. We have the highest budget deficits, we have the highest trade deficits, of course. These problems are not caused by immigration, but a lot of problems are exacerbating by the exploding immigration-driven population growth. By the way, I have only one child uh, intentionally because I'm concerned population growth. And my siblings, I still have siblings abroad who are not immigrating because they have seen many Americans, legal immigrants, professional and low skilled, who cannot find work. They realized the U.S. has its decline very rapidly. Now, something that, that I would like very much to share with you. Even without increasing immigration, without another amnesty, if the U.S. population just continues to grow at the current rate, meaning, I'd say, like last decade, from 1990 to 2000, mathematically, by 2050, meaning within the lifetimes of today's college students, we're going to have 522 million people. This is about half of current India's population again, within the lifetime of college students. Is that what we want for today's children? And if we don't address immigration now, when are we going to do it? Again, our immigration policy should not be used as a safety valve by foreign corrupt nations. And I believe that each nation has the mandate to improve life for its own citizen. Look at China. 30 years ago, China was very poor. And since then, China experienced tremendous economic growth, although China is not perfect in many years. But still, we owe China, United States, listen up, United States owe China $262 billion. And read a recent article on Business Week Online. The situation is very grim. The article said that, you know, the prediction that in 20 years, the U.S. will become a third world economy was actually optimistic. Again, it's high time, I urge you all, legal residents, U.S. foreign and foreign born, to oppose all amnesty proposals, and actually I think we should have some sort of time out for legal immigration, lower it to a level that would not add more workers to our labor markets, or students to our schools, or people to consume more energy. We need some time out so that we develop a sensible immigration policy to reflect our resource availability and our economic realities. Thank you very much. Uh, what we'll do is uh, I'll introduce Vicky, of course. We'll follow with a presentation by Vicky and then allow each speaker to have two or three minutes to run perhaps high points that they feel uh, deserve a response. Uh, Vicki Maester is Program Director of Immigration and Resettlement Services of Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Santa Rosa. Her office reunites families who have been separated by the immigration process, resettles refugees, assists immigrants, immigrant survivors of domestic violence, and helps eligible immigrants gain permanent residency for the last several years. The immigration and Resettlement Services has conducted a citizenship project, a program that prepares eligible immigrants to become naturalized citizens of the U.S. Prior to joining Catholic Charities, Vicki directed community health care programs in Southern and Northern California for 13 years, serving uninsured and low-income individuals who lack access to health care. Vicki. Thank you. 